classic hardcore has received many different changes. For example, what will happen when you disconnect, how you gear up your character, and many other things. And all of these I will cover in this video. Anyway, enjoy. When someone reaches max level, there will now be a server announcement, letting everyone know that a person also reached level 60. On the PTR, the max level was 30, so therefore we got an announcement every time someone reached that level. I've also tested what happens when you fly from one destination to another one and accidentally disconnect, because in some cases you used to be able to also dismount right after, and this could cause your character to die to fall damage or land on top of high level enemies. But it seems like if I randomly disconnect, or if I attempt to disconnect myself, then I'm not accidentally going to dismount, so this is such a good fix. Later in the video, I'll also test what happens when you disconnect and how quickly you will actually log out. Another thing that could also happen while flying was that as you entered a new zone, you could also dismount. This thing has also been fixed. Back in Season of Mastery, when the first hardcore challenge was introduced, there was also a new NPC. This NPC you could talk to and receive a buff called Soul of Iron, but you could only enable this as long as you had not died on that character. In Hardcore it seems like this NPC will be introduced once again, so at random times you will turn grey and get this spinning animation around you. In case you don't like this animation, well then you can always just disable it by speaking to the NPC. When WoW Classic was introduced, the interface were also changed compared to how it was in Vanilla, but in Classic Hardcore it will be changed once again. Now there will only be one box you need to pay attention to, Options. In Options you can change many different things to your gameplay, accessibility, and of course your system, so graphics and other things. Even your key bindings will also be changed in here, under this section, gameplay, and then go to key bindings. As it's going to be a new interface, then it might also be difficult to navigate around. But don't worry, at the top right corner, you can always search for what you're looking for, and then it will redirect you to the exact page, so you don't have to go through everything in gameplay, accessibility, or system. All content will also be available from the beginning, so when you reach level 60, you could for example head right into Soul Guru or even Next Ramus. But I guess you need to fix your gear before you can even start raiding. When all content is being available, then it will also have an impact on how you're going to get your pre-raid base gear. Because now you can get your tier 0 0.5 or even the amazing blue items from Diamol. Another thing that has also been changed is that PvP will no longer be a thing. Oh well, what I mean is that there will no longer be a possibility to do battlegrounds or kill people in the open world and rank up, because the ranking has been removed and also all the PvP gear. What we have got instead is Duel to the Death. The player that ends up losing will also lose their character, or well, you will end up dying. The winner will of course be able to continue their journey and they also get a buff called String of Ears. This is a number that will increase as you win more and more duels. However, you can only start collecting these when you're level 19 or above. And this buff will not be something that will improve your character's performance in any way. It will just be something you can show other people so they know how many players you have slain. Before you can start these duels, then you will also have to type I agree in the box. So players cannot just run to you and then you accidentally press accept to a duel to the death. So now you might also wonder, what happens if you flee from these duels? Well, then you will get a nasty debuff that lasts for 3 days. It reduces your damage, attributes, armor, and even resistance by 20%. What has been nerfed is dungeon farming. Every single dungeon will now have a 24 hours cooldown, so you cannot just spam the same dungeon over and over. Therefore, you also need to make sure you assemble a decent group. The moment you reach level 60, there will no longer be a dungeon cooldown. So you can go back to a lower level dungeon and spam this to get a specific item, or a higher level dungeon to get one of your pre read biz items. Using your bubble followed by your hearthstone to prevent a death is also going to be blocked by Blizzard. You are not going to be able to do this move any longer. And on top of this, you cannot use your resurrection spell to bring a player back to life. And not even your self resurrection spells will work. So as a shaman you cannot use your reincarnation, and as a warlock, you cannot use your soul stone. Not even on another player. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there were some changes to disconnecting. Back in original WoW Classic, you used to be online for probably 4 to 5 minutes after a disconnect. 
this has been reduced by a high amount. So what I did here was to disconnect myself on purpose by logging into another character on the very same account, just to see if I could find myself in the open world or if I would be disconnected right away. So it seems like players will not be able to abuse disconnecting to prevent a death, because this character is still online, just not for 5 minutes, no, for 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, you will be logged out automatically, even though you're in combat. So hopefully, if you disconnect, then you also have enough health to survive for 30 seconds. Because there is a chance that you will accidentally disconnect, then I would also recommend you not to use too many add-ons, and also not use the best possible graphics. By lowering these things, you will also be logging in a lot faster, and therefore also have a chance to prevent a death. On the official classic hardcore servers, the mailbox, trade system, yeah even the auction house will be available. So this is a thing you can use to for example make gold for your mount and many other things. Because I make most of my gold on the auction house, then I definitely also like that this is in the game. But I know some of you also fear that this will bring more bots and of course gold sellers to the game. But then again, how much will this even matter if you just want to enjoy your own journey from 1 to 60? Well, as long as you don't care about seeing bots, fly hackers or even teleporting people, well then I guess it will be fine. But I honestly fear that we'll see quite a few bots when there's a way to make real money in the game. Anyway, on to the next thing. So when you die on your hardcore character, you have two options. You can either delete it and make a new character with the exact same name, or you can transfer your character away to another server. The servers you can transfer to will be classic error servers. Another big change is that the buff and debuff limit has been removed. This allows a class such as a warlock to play as a flexion. You can now throw your dots onto a raid target without preventing other raid members from doing damage. So yeah, this is a big change and definitely something I'm looking forward to. So you might have experienced this before. You pick up a quest where you only need to kill one specific enemy. But the respawn time is damn slow and there's a ton of competition. It seems like Blizzard hasn't mentioned this, but the respawn time is a lot faster now. I was in this cave only with one other player, and the boss here, or well, the specific enemy, were respawning after 30 seconds. In my opinion, this is not too bad when we're only two players. But what will happen next is quite surprising. So as we continue to kill the same enemy over and over, the respawn time were also getting a lot faster. At some point, it were respawning after 10 seconds. But remember, we were only two people. Imagine when there's going to be a lot of other people, then I expect the respawn time to probably be anywhere between 2 to 5 seconds. So we might also have an opportunity to complete these kind of quests the day the official classic hardcore servers goes live. Blizzard has also mentioned that they're not going to tolerate any kind of griefing. One thing they have for example implemented is that you will no longer be able to drag an elite from one zone into another one. But they will of course also take action against any player who tried to grieve another one. What will happen to the griefer is something we don't really know. I guess it could be a ban, but then again, with all the bots and hackers running around in WoW Classic era right now, then I doubt there's going to be GMs running around and also paying attention. So I guess you will also need to record the player who tries to grieve you, or who actually managed to grieve you. Talking about griefing, then I also felt like I had to highlight this clip, because it will definitely happen to you. And no, this is not going to be a grief attempt. It's going to be game mechanics that could cause you to die. So as I was fighting this enemy and almost got to kill it, more enemies also started to spawn. Nearby players tagged these immediately. Yeah, this hunter even body pulled more. But because I was fighting an enemy as all of them started to spawn, and also being a nearby player to all of this, then I'm also left in combat. And I'm in combat, or well, in a fight with all these enemies now. So if the other players manage to either get away, or end up dying, then I'm also still in combat. So whenever all these enemies are no longer going to chase them, they will come back for me. So you always gotta pay attention to stuff like this, because you can't really call it a grief, it's just a game mechanic. I know this game mechanic is not something that has been changed or recently implemented, it's just something I felt was important to highlight, so there's also a higher chance that you'll make it to 60. Therefore, I've also released different kind of videos with tips and tricks and mistakes you should avoid doing. You can find these on my channel to increase your chance of surviving and making it to 60. Therefore, I've also put together a video with all the different tips and tricks I use in hardcore 
to increase my chance of surviving and making it to 60. You can find this video in the description or on my channel, together with many other guides that will help you get started in hardcore.